Welcome, everyone. We're going to begin the webinar on benchmarking paint costs. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact. John Halstead, Director of Business Support for RDA, is your presenter today. The webinar will take approximately 15 to 25 minutes. We are recording it and we'll post it on our the website under training videos. If you have questions, you can type them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen and John will answer them at the end of the presentation. Now, I'll turn it over to John. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is an important new initiative for RDA and our member distributors. Uh, real quickly, in terms of um, my position with RDA and my background, um, as Melissa said, I'm the Director of Business Support for RDA. My role is to help RDA distributors and their customers be, be more successful. Uh, I have 27 years in the PBE industry um, in distribution and collision industry consulting, uh, starting way back in 1999, 1991 with Superior Auto Paints, which evolved into a collision consulting company called Collision Management Services, where we did a lot of contract training with both BASF and Toyota and did additional collision center consulting um, and working with trade associations and other groups such as CarStar, Fix Auto, et cetera. In, uh, in 2010, we became merged with a Matos organization and became Pro Finishers Plus. And then in 2014, Pro Finishers Plus was acquired by National Coatings and Supplies. I worked with NCS until this past March and then joined, uh, rejoined uh, RDA in, uh, in, in May of this year. So looking forward to working with all of you when I want to talk about this initiative we're taking on um, at this point in time. RDA and its member distributors are seeking to collect monthly paint hours so we can benchmark paint cost per paint hour and help you increase your paint material profitability. I want to make a point very, very clear that it's obviously a concern of, of every collision shop um, that, we, that we're asking for data from is shop identities will not be shared. Uh, only your local distributor will know who you are. Um, so any an analysis we do or any benchmark we do will be, will be blind, if you will, in terms of the identity where the numbers came from. Um, our objective, as I said before, is to increase our customers' paint and material profitability and help them increase output. We want all our customers to purchase all of the paint materials from us, but to purchase as little as necessary to support desired output. If you're overbuying and overusing, that's not good for either one of us. So we want to make sure that you are using only the amount of product you need to produce the amount of output from your shop. We desire to build a long-term relationship with you, one that's mutually beneficial. But I'll focus on paint cost to refinish, and I want to explain why that is. And number one, paint liquid accounts for about 70% of your monthly paint material purchases. Measuring this number at refinish uh, eliminates any differences in price that may occur and how it may be accounted for. Some shops may receive a discount on the invoice, some may get it at month end, some may get it through a prebate. However, it's accounted for, we want to eliminate that so we get everybody an apples and apples basis for benchmarking purposes. This enables us to benchmark across RDA and the industry and in your local market as well. A little definition, paint liquid shall include all color, tints and toners, reducers, clear coats, hardeners and activators, primers, sealers, and any miscellaneous products used in a sprayable mix. It should not include wash thinners or other non-paint products that may be purchased from a paint manufacturer or distributor. The distributor should use their best judgment to achieve the most accurate representation of products. Calculating paint only cost at, at reason, we talk with something that's called referred paint only cost as peel. Um, this is an illustration for, for a of a, of a customer that we see by, say, a 15% discount on the invoice. Now, some some distributors and some customers may uh, receive not get a discount on the invoice and get their discount at a month end, 
which case there's no adjustment needs to be made. It's just, we're just gonna record um, the purchases at invoice price. But if you happen to receive an in, a discount on the invoice, as a, for instance, in this example, 15%, we'd take the amount of purchases, say in this example, $6,543 was invoiced of, and this is again, not total paint materials, but just paint liquid, we divide that by a discount factor, which is one minus the discount. So a 15% discount, discount factor would be 0.85. So I divide that $6,543 by 0.85, and we get paint purchases, there's a typo there, sorry about that. Paint purchases that refinish would be $7,698. Then if we divide that by the monthly paint hours, in this example, we're using 305, then the paint only cost per per paint hour at refinish would be $25.24. That's just a simple math of how we go through that. Only thing we need from the shop is monthly paint hours. The distributor can can calculate the the paint purchases and, um, and gross it up to refinish as needed. This is an example of a comparison of 49 shops where it had an average of $21.36. And you see the red bar across is the uh, average number at $21.36 an hour. You can see half the shops are above that number, half the shops are below. There's a big, despite the fact that the average is $21, there's a big spread in the, from the best to worst, from going from as little as $10 per hour up to over $40 per hour. And this is pretty typical. Every time I've done this in the past, and this was actually a sampling of, of, a, of a group of, of 200 shops. Um, and it's the same was true for, for every time we do it, the shape is always different. The uh, or shape is always the same. And the, uh, but the, uh, um, the numbers may, may be different. What I want to show is is the the impact of a reduction in, in paint only costs, which we're trying to achieve. The purpose of benchmarking is to see what's a realistic number for the marketplace, and then we can compare shops to it. So here's an example of, and I happen to pick arbitrary shop number 41, uh, where you can see the red arrow is, and I've got a, a red another air, red arrow at the average shop, if you will. Um, shop number 41, their paint cost per paint hour was 26.62 versus the group average of 21.36. Um, so if I took a difference of that, it's five hours and 26 cents per hour times 520 paint hours, which happens to be the number of paint hours for that shop. Means on a on a on a monthly basis, if they were able to re- reduce their paint usage from $26 an hour down to $21 an hour, they would save an average $2,700 per month or on an annual basis, almost $33,000. That's a 20% reduction in cost. Um, so that's what we're trying to achieve is to try to identify shops that are are, are performing higher than average on paint consumption and move them toward that average. And we'll also look at shops that are average and move them maybe toward that top 25%. Wherever wherever your number is, we want to improve that to one degree or the other. Now here's a real life example. This is this is a, a, an actual set of shop numbers. These are, again, from a few years back, um, but we had a dealership group we were working with and from February to July 2014, their average paint cost per paint hour was $20.43. When we started measuring their usage and working with them to reduce their usage during the, the following year, we were able to take their paint cost per paint hour and reduce it to $17.09, at, uh, at an improvement of $3.34. They had that during 2015, they averaged 993 paint hours per month. So on average, we were able to save them $3,316 per month or on the annual basis, just shy of $40,000 during the year. 
that was a very big impact for them and certainly very pleasing to their management. I also want to make a comment is during that period of, period of time in 2015, their pain hours increased by 46, 46 hours per month. So they actually got more output at less cost than they were before. Collecting pain hours. Collecting pain hours is, is relatively easy to do if you have a body shop management system, CCC1, Metro, Rome, et cetera. That's the preferred way, but we don't like to have is the pain hours that were actually invoiced from your shop uh, during the course of the month. If you don't have a management system, then payroll, if you have flat rate technicians, then payroll is another alternative because uh, obviously if you're paying your, uh, pay, uh, your painters on a flat rate basis, both you and they know how many hours are turning in the course of the month. So that's the next alternative for collecting paint hours. And finally, if, no other, if there's no other way to do it, it's directly from the ROs or estimates. And simply at the end of the month, just tally up the number of paint hours um, on closed, uh, closed ROs during the course of the month. So that's the only thing we need from the uh, from the shops each month is is the number of paint hours produced for that month. Here's an example of a uh, of a one page uh, report cost tracking that we made available to our distributors. Now your distributor may have a different format for a report to collect this information, that's fine. If they don't, they can use this. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet that where they can track in the paint discount, if, if any, the paint liquid purchases, the paint hours, the form will automatically gross up the paint purchases to refinish. It'll calculate paint liquid cost per refinish hour and it allows the input of a goal. So on the graph shown below, the green line is the, is the actual uh, paint cost per paint hour and the blue number, the blue line is the goal, the arbitrary goal we set for that. So you can track monthly performance, see if you're trending up or down, you can input a goal and make it very make the reporting and very very easy. Um, once we gather uh, data across RDA, we'll when we get more and more shops, we'll com compile comparison shops similar to the one I showed before. The more data we have, the more shops, the more months, the more meaningful the information will be. This is just a guideline to show where you stand relative to other shops and what numbers are possible. The best benchmark is your own performance. Simply seek to get better. Communicating goal results and goals. Obviously, this is an area we want our distributors and shop management working together. What we don't want to be doing is, is going out and, and if a shop's performance turns out to be higher than we'd like it to be, um, we don't want to be, you know, going, going around, running around the shop pointing fingers at, at technicians and tell them that they're wasting materials. We want to communicate that in a positive way, and we want to engage both management and technicians and share, share the scorecard, if you will, and set a goal. We want to encourage best practices. Um, I've often said more heat, less light. Let's not point fingers. We want them to show them that that there is a potential for waste and we want to work with them to reduce that waste. Everything that wastes materials also wastes time. If they're having, if they're over mixing or mixing, you know, too many times or having a lot of redos, that is also taking time and costing them production. So if we're able to help the technicians save on materials by eliminating waste, they'll also be wasting less time and presumably they'll be out to produce more paint hours and make more income as a result of that. We want to focus on helping technicians produce more rather than finger pointing in, in the process about uh, uh, wasting paint. This is an ongoing forever process. We want to, once we start it, we'll want to continue it so we can continue to improve and help you use fewer, fewer materials. 
Judas and usage. Um, obviously, it, that's where the focus comes in. That's the hard part of this process. Once we know the score, we can start identifying areas of potential waste. As I mentioned before, over mixing, over application, redos, sometimes even pilferage and side work. Again, everything that wastes materials also wastes time and reduces output. Inventory management plays a big role as well. We want to have the shops on our replenishment process with a greater consistency and predictability. We want to eliminate peaks and valleys in the inventory and purchase level. level. And again, a kind of a philosophy of use one, order one type of replenishment process. You're only ordering and buying what you're using. And that'll keep inventory management under control. And obviously we want you to not ever run out of what you need, but we don't want to overstock you on the materials either. <clears throat> Less wasted materials and time, higher, higher, higher profit and more output. Less paint material use equals less tech time and higher productivity. Less fewer materials to order, stock, and dispatch. Fewer invoices to process. Fewer production interruptions due to lack of needed products. Increased mutual accountability between the distributor and the shop. And, and by measuring, you always know where you stand. Or there's no surprises in terms of your bill at the end of the month. Um, some shops may uh, may measure for you total paint material cost per paint hour. We want to continue that if that's what they're already doing. Um, it's just harder to benchmark across different distributors because of different classification of allied products. So right now, from a benchmarking standpoint, we're going to focus on paint liquid cost. It's an easier number for us to benchmark, but we also want to support whatever they may be doing for you as a customer. Um, in terms of uh, accountability of total paint material cost and paint material profitability. So I don't know if you have any questions. Went through this pretty quickly. Sorry for the uh, connection problems, but uh, we look forward to working with you. Again, what we're seeking from our customers is um, is paint hours, monthly paint hours. We can start putting together a a a, a tool to track that. Over, over time, and then as we collect more and more data across RDA, we'll be able to get into the benchmarking of those numbers and the shop comparison numbers and share that information with you at the appropriate time. Well, we don't have any questions. Um, you can follow up with your uh, distributors, um, and I will send John's information, contact information, so if you have any email questions, you can follow up with him directly, and uh, we appreciate everybody joining us and apologize for the phone issue, but uh, you resolved it, John, so we're good. And uh, we'll be in touch with upcoming training opportunities. I don't see any questions, so um, that'll conclude the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you.